Next I'm going to glue on the motor mount. So I'm not using the one that is supplied. I'm going to be using my own 3D printed motor mount that I designed this morning. You will find a link to this on Thingiverse, so feel free to download it and print it yourself if you do like it. It does give you the option of mounting a 12mm spaced motor or a 16mm spaced motor straight up. This is going to be something that's going to be quite easy to install. I've done this in the past on other wings and it's it's worked pretty reliably. So basically all you're going to do is put it in the centre. Eyeball is good enough. Put a slice. Okay, now pick it up slide the whole assembly in. That is it. That's that simple. So you can just wiggle the foam around, get it nice. When you're happy with the fact that it's sort of not tilting forward, it's flush with the bottom, it's square along those lines, now you can go ahead and do the same with the epoxy and glue that into place. Now would be a really good time to start nutting through some of your electrics. I find it much easier to do that while it's on the bench before it's installed in the craft. You'd hate to go ahead and glue a servo in and then find out it may have been faulty, something along those lines. It's also a really good idea to go through, check all your sub trims, make sure everything's trimmed out, uh, and then go ahead and install your servo horns at 90 degrees opposing each other. Much easier to do that right now. Even if it's not allocated on the right channel, that doesn't really matter. As long as everything's working, your receiver's bound, your battery's working, ESC seems to be talking okay, uh, and your radio's all bound up. On to the next stage. Okay, as you can see, I've gone ahead and built one side uh, of the control linkages, and I wanted to show you guys how to build the other side. Once I've completed this side, I thought it'd be a good idea to, to make sure everything was moving okay. And I found that I've hit a little bit of a stumbling block. As I move the sticks on my controller, these little two and a half gram servos don't quite have enough torque to pull this control surface the way they have it aligned. So I think at this stage I will be moving to the, the next size servo up. Okay, as you can see, I have removed the tiny little two and a half gram servo uh, and replaced that with the 3.6 gram servo. Um, I did have to cut out uh, the bottom section of the foam because the servo is a little too deep. And the other thing I did have to do is shorten up my, my control arm. So this is one of the real good things about these style of uh, control links. Uh, you can just basically go ahead and crack it and reset it. So that only took me a few minutes to change over. So that was a nice little bonus. So let's see how much throw we're getting now. Lots on the way up and not a lot on the way down. But it should be okay. We are seeing quite a bit of twisting going through that surface. So it's going to be interesting to see how this thing flies in its stock trim. If you do want to make it a little bit sporty at this stage, you can always move the clevis closer to the, the pivot line. The closer that is, the more aggressive this is going to be. So that might be something I do down, you know, uh, down the road if I find that it's not quite aggressive enough. Okay, so how did I go about installing the servos, making the control link, and installing the clevis? Let's have a bit of a look. So don't worry about the fact that this is pointing off in the wrong direction. That doesn't matter. We can turn that around at a, a later date. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using a foam safe glue. Uh, it's really important to use foam safe. You don't want to eat into the glue. I'm also not using a two-part epoxy here. I'm using a cyanoacrylate because I find it a lot easier to crack off if I ever have to replace the servos, like I just did. So, very simple. You'll notice that I have already cut the, the bottom section of this wing out. Simple as sliding the servo into the socket and putting your cable over to where it needs to sit. Make sure that's nice and flush. 
Now I find it easier to try and just sort of bend the wing slightly at this stage and then you can kind of thread the cable through. A little bit longer tedious but you know you'll get it there, it's not too bad. Now the instructions say to glue this in. Uh, I wouldn't ever glue the cables in. As you see, you know, servos are something you might have to change out every now and then. So that's good enough for the moment. Let's move on to the clevis. Now the clevises supplied are actually quite neat. They're actually uh, like a clicking clevis. It's a little hard to see. They're tiny little clear pieces. There is a little rectangle that goes on the back and as you insert it, it actually all clicks together. So there is already a hole cut in the back of the foam. So just a few dots of the cyanoacrylate. Again, just get that on there. Okay. Poke it in through the hole in the wing. Sort of jiggle it around a little bit to distribute some of that glue. Then on the back you will see there's a tiny little rectangle poking through. Then we take this tiny little rectangle and we click it in there. So it's a bit of a... There we go. You just see there's a tiny little piece sitting proud. So at that stage you can put another little dot of uh, glue on there just to hold it all together. Okay, that is your control horn now put on. Next, let's move on to the control links. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is turn your servo horn to 90 degrees to the, the travel of the, the link. This is the supplied uh, Z-Bend. I have gone ahead and put just a little bit more of a bend on there. When I inserted them as a test, it wasn't quite sitting flush, so I've put a little bit more of a bend. Now I'm deciding to use the external holes, so I get as little throw as possible to start with, and then if we're a little bit you know, more sporty, we can go ahead and uh, add a little bit more if we want to. So, you then take the carbon rod that is supplied with the kit, leave around about 7 or 8 millimetres between either end, where the, the pivot point is, you go and cut. So there you go, you've just got a nice little bar that's now going to connect those together. You also have been given some heat shrink within the kit. So cut yourself off maybe about 10 millimeters of that. Okay, nice. Now here's where the fun comes in. I'm going to take a little bit of glue, cyanoacrylate, put it on the end of your carbon. I'm going to take our little piece of our heat shrink and at this stage we are also going to grab ourselves a cigarette lighter or barbecue lighter, whatever you want to use. Line this up So you're pretty confident that it's lining up with both ends. Go ahead and now hit your heat shrink. Now there's a reason I do this with the barbecue lighter. As you can see the cyanoacrylate is flammable. Uh, it actually lights up and it actually helps with the, the bonding to the material. So uh, it's not something I would usually do. Recommend you start a fire in your house but for this situation, it works absolutely perfectly. So same process down here. See how that there's not quite at the same angle as the way it's traveling? We might want to put just a little bit more of a bend into that Z bend if we can. So remove it. Very easy. Just take a pair of pliers and just give it a little bit more of a, a tweak. So it's trying to travel in the same direction, it's not trying to pull against where you want to go. So again, we're using the outermost holes. Okay. So now that lines up a lot better with uh, the way it was. So we go ahead and do the same trick. Okay. 
little dot of cyanide acrylate. Slide your heat shrink over the top of the whole thing. When the confident it's got lined up, this model is holding the control surface dead flat, so I don't have to try and hold the control surface while I'm doing this. Basically, it's just a chance of hit it again. There you go. Control links are done.